Hi, everybody. I am Brian Mullins the Fox, and I'm going to recap all the three Whisper Willet audiobooks. Let's start with the first one. Number one, Whisper Willet found out his family existed when he was 18 in 1984, started working for the Theater of the Lamb in 1989, a bar that was built in 1962 and opened up in light of the murder-slash-cover-up of six wolves that shared the same blood, but different names, or also known as the Troutbow Faith Bloodline of October 11th, 1958 to Christmas Day 1962. The drink that made the bar famous was called Brand New Pack, a drink comprising of trace amounts of wolf's blood, red wine, honey, and barbecue sauce. That drink stopped being served to other anthro animals on January 11, 1966, the day Whisper was born. The reason why Whisper and Redmire were in the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship in the first place was because both of them lived a lie. William Whisper Willett died of stage 4 penile cancer at the age of 29 years old, with the nearest nurse describing his dick size being at a profound 15 inches and his testicles both being black and being the size of ostrich eggs, in her opinion. 2. Redmire first met Whisper when they were in high school. She became his regular 9-to-5 friend when he was working at the bar, and he had a short-lived boyfriend-girlfriend relationship with Whisper. They typically had sex and took showers either separately or together. They typically went to Vixen's Fixin's to get their dinner, both went on tirades about how much their lives were a lot and how shitty their families were. The conception failed in Red Meyer's vagina the first time, but finally succeeded as Whisper's last load of his life. Red Meyer broke up with Whisper because of a stage 4 dick cancer that would later kill him three weeks later after the breakup. Funny how Redmeyer wasn't mistaken for Belba Troutbo, just like Whisper was mistaken for Belbo Troutbo. While Redmeyer was found pregnant weeks after her breakup with Whisper, she replaced him with Ken McCall the Grey Wolf, which ended up killing himself after she broke up with him, while she was on the run to find the perfect place in the woods to give birth. Redmeyer died of wolf childbirth, and, funny enough, the newborn didn't even get to live for a week, as he died five days after birth, and the day Red Meyer herself died at the age of 22 years old. Poor little Timothy Willett. 3. Both Whisper Willets and Red Meyer's families covered up the murder conspiracy was later made aware of Whisper's and Red Meyer's existence after being confronted directly by them. They then met the two at the Theater of the Lamb to watch a double feature show, the pre-Willet pack, Hail Whisper Willet, and Mostly Know How's pre-Willet special, the latter of which had all 30 of them dying brutally of non-stop laughter after 30 minutes over one question, which made the Theater of the Lamb collapse and catch fire to burn to a crisp after 32 years of existence. But not before Whisper Redmire and the movie theater projectionist made a run for it to save their lives. All end up dying afterwards anyway. Mostly Know How and the projectionist committed suicide together and kept their death ages anonymous even to this day. Let's recap the second one. 1. Redbow, Jennifer, and Bruce drove all the way from their home state in Pennsylvania all the way up to the outskirts of Small Heights, Michigan to find the plot of land where the Theater of the Lamb once resided by and burnt down in 1995. They heard the 30 ghosts outburst of laughter, scaring the shit out of all of them. Jennifer quietly bitches to herself and warns Redbow of the spooky ramifications it has to potential future customers, as they were planning to build a bar there at that same spot. Redbow dismisses Jennifer's solemn warning. They removed the remaining 15 decomposing corpses and their bones out to the lake 150 feet away from where the old bar was. 2. They then went back to build up a new bar after some time of sleep, a lot of money spent, and a drive back to the same cursed plot of land. They finished building it after five days of hard work. Redbow names it Bad to the Bow Wow. They had normal drink items this time, unlike the Theater of the Lamb. One night, Bruce Bilcock asked Jennifer ten questions about the curious case of Whisper Willett's story. Jennifer responded accordingly, causing Bruce to stay silent until after he was done taking a piss in the bathroom, and came back laughing out loud, hysterically. 3. Bruce Bilcock was among 29 more anthro-animals 
to mysteriously die of laughter because the ghosts invaded their bodies, took their souls away, and Jennifer explains to Redbow why he died so prematurely. After 10 minutes of non-stop laughter, while only finding out the 29 others the morning after. Explaining how Bruce kept doing heroin for breakfast and crack for lunch at the same time and drank beer from his asshole, which he vomited all out of his mouth. Talk about a serious party animal, people. This adds another 30 to the other 30 ghosts, making it a total of 60 ghosts. Both laughed out loud for a few seconds and quietly went safely back to their hotel room. It would have been back to Pennsylvania where they belong had it not been for the obvious plot twist. They took a shower together, got into their pajamas, and then went to bed. No sex at all. 4. Redbow essentially left the hotel room, leaving Jennifer all alone to drive back to his home in Pennsylvania. Before he left, though, he went off on a one-minute rant and then passed out. Two hours later, he finally left, hosting his own online live stream, planning out what turned out to be a five-state-wide and 17-hour-long murder-suicide spree. Jennifer, finding out that Red Bow's live livestream video existed emotionally and mentally broke her completely, calls him to confirm the indirect breakup with Red Bow. Jennifer proceeds to grab a long rope and hang herself in the bathroom shower. The crime scene cleaners that served the come hither in quickly cleaned up the suicide crime scene. 5. In total, Red Bow was successfully able to murder a whopping 12,500 wolves with a long silver machete by beheading them all, leaving them all to bleed themselves to death that way, while other family members nearby either screamed their heads off or killed themselves altogether. The death toll outside of the wolves he killed was 100,000, all of which were suicides by either hanging, gunshot to the head, snapping their heads clean off, their shoulders, or falling off a dangerous height and landing on their feet, gushing out with blood and bone. Twelve and a half thousand of these wolves used to have seven other family members each, making it eight by accounting for them, too. Redbow later confesses to his family after 17 straight hours of brutal killing and suicides that happened as a result of the murders. Redbow gradually begins to argue with his parents, Charles and Annabelle. In turn, Charles and Annabelle begin to argue with each other a little bit more. Things escalated to the point where Redbow emotionally blew up and then proceeded to shoot down his entire family and then himself with his machine gun. 6. All the while, when Redbow was doing all of that, Brian Beagle Blood, the anthro canine police officer, kept tabs on him secretly. After Redbow did what he did, not just to the 12,500 he killed and the 100,000 he left to kill themselves, Brian Beagle Blood killed himself, making it the final suicide to take place in the second Whisper Willet audiobook. And finally, seven. Now, that remains is a mostly empty bar with three employees, one bartender, one bouncer, and one security guard, if they stay alive and never get dragged down to their deaths by those 60 ghosts. Luckily, they don't have to worry about that anymore. The come they in has finally decided to permanently close its doors after just 60 years of service. 1951 to 2011. Because they ran out of staff members to hire, the remaining quit, and some other hotel rooms were left as total pigsties, with at least one dead corpse left unattended for each. The Michigan town that the original audiobook took place in was called Small Heights. The house in Pennsylvania that Redbow killed his family and then himself in was cleaned out only to be completely demolished at the end. The tiny town of Small Heights has been permanently condemned, including the now defunct restaurant that was well known as Fixin's Fixin's. Every single anthro animal that has ever died in Small Heights, Michigan, including the 30 in the first audiobook, have been dug out of their graves for brutal cremation. What was the cemetery is now where every demolished place in what was known as Small Heights, Michigan was buried underneath. Now, all the cursed laughing ghosts have gone away and never came back to curse anyone ever again, only leaving Whisper Willet, this quote-unquote dead corpse, left to be discovered in the third audiobook. Now, let's recap the third and final audiobook. Number one, five weeks after being completely built on March 28, 2040, 
The new town was given a name, White Cox Gulp, Iowa. Wesper Willett II was named and elected as the first mayor of the city. As time went on, the population of the city went from 0 to 110,000 within the month of April of 2040. There were hundreds of other name suggestions for the city, although the rest of them never materialized to this day. There were three separate neighborhoods, two of which being suburbs, two high schools, two middle schools, two elementary schools, two daycare centers, one church, five restaurants, and the largest part of the city, Mayor City Hall. There's also a giant supermarket for anthro animals to go grocery shopping named Grocery Bags and Sacks. There's another bar that was built far away from Red Bow's Bad to the Bow Wow bar that was later demolished in August of 2035. Due to infrastructural problems, the town was set ablaze by the former mayor himself. But before the town was left to burn down to the ground, the firefighters came right on time to save 95% of the empty city. Only 5% burned down. Whisper Willett II escapes from White Cox Gulp, Iowa. Finally, the firefighters were the last ones to leave the town, and now the population of the city is back to zero again. The city was fully and successfully burnt down by Whisper Willet II later on. The burnt remains of the city was swept up by an EF-5 tornado alongside with the dead corpses, one of them being the original Whisper Willet, who finally died for the second and final time on November 1st, 2041, and the other one being Whisper Willet II himself after he died of a fatal heart attack on the same day, on the same morning. 2. Whisper Willet II was raised in a somewhat abusive Anthrowolf family. He had his abusive mother Flake Willet, his subordinate father Zenith or Zenny Willet, his other nickname was Peanut Butt, and his two mentally retarded siblings, nicknamed Red and Yellow Willet. He dropped out of high school at the age of 18 because both of his parents decided to kill each other, or Zenith kills Flake and then himself, but that didn't stop him from seeking future ambitions of becoming an important public figure, like a president, mayor, or even prime minister. Red and Yellow were just left to literally cannibalize one another and die. He resigned as mayor after the Christmas Day dead newborn tragedy of 2040. 3. On the night and early morning of May 1st to 2nd, 2040, Whisper Willet II, after having heard enough of the entire population of female anthro-animals protesting against a complete lack of a sexual partner, drives all the way up to the now non-existent town of Small Heights, Michigan, finds the quote-unquote dead corpse of the original Whisper Willet, 1966 to 1995, belly up in the middle of the road. Whisper Willet II then proceeds to commence into 69ing this corpse, but after 15 minutes of sexual intercourse, the semen suddenly vanishes and the corpse is clean again. Whisper Willet II picked the corpse up, positioned him onto the passenger seat of his red truck, buckled him up, and took them all the way back to White Cox Gulp, Iowa. 4. After returning from Small Heights, Michigan, Whisper Willet II went back to the city hall building he called home, hired 30 other anthro animal scientists, shaped and molded the corpse of Whisper Willet the first and made him into a sex doll. The sex doll had a bunch of interesting details about him. 20 days later, the sex doll sold like hotcakes, about 110,000 of them individually to be exact. How these anthro animal scientists designed and programmed the sex doll to talk, hump, fuck, and impregnate you was with a certain fluid packet containing synthetic semen for any specific species of anthro animal you can name of. Alongside with these water tablets so no water is required for the doll to survive. That's the job of his built-in charger. On the night of May 10th, 2040, Mayor Whisper Wilt II secretly hatched his plan to doom all of wolves on planet Earth with yet another genocide attempt. This time, it won't backfire spectacularly like Red Bow's attempt did. This time, it'll actually be all around the world except for Antarctica because it's pretty much inhabitable in the mayor's opinion. His plan eventually got leaked by Redmire Riots II, even though the population knew the plan all along on May 30th. And both Redmire Riots II and Whisper Willet II aren't actually related to the first ones with their names. 5. Overwhelmingly positive reviews used to flood out all other ones, until overwhelmingly negative ones began to appear. The most popular and notable ones came from Mary Ballspur, the Siamese anthrocat, and Bella Ottoberger, the anthro dog. Mary used this to predict 
how the birthing process will be anything but meaningful. Mary Ballsberg became the second mayor of White Cox Gulf, Iowa. 79,000 dead newborns littered the town, and 31,000 anthro women couldn't get their abortions in the town on Christmas Day 2040. Mary Ballsberg immediately resigned as second and last mayor of White Cox Gulf, Iowa. A winter storm hit the town and left them without power for two hours. They then decided to wait until January 31st, 2041 to leave the city. Meanwhile, in White Cox Gulf, Iowa, Red Meyer II finds herself brutally raped and murdered by former Mayor Whisperwillet II himself. 6. All the 110,000 anthro-animal women decided to leave White Cox Gulp, Iowa for good. All of these anthro-animals went back to their respective habitats and environments. 31,000 of them that were still pregnant successfully and safely got their abortions. All of these 110,000 found male partners of their own, they all had sex with them, and months later got pregnant again, but with real semen from their respective partners of their respective species. Within just eight months, they all were on the verge of breaking their water, and then a few months later, on April 30th, 2041, all these female anthro animals attempt to hold the first ever mass birthing convention. A convention where every single one of them gives birth in front of one another. This convention took place in the middle of the woods in Illinois. The host of the convention was Bella Ottoberger, alongside with her co-host, Mary Ballsper. The anthro women were given the birthing process instructions and the recommended distance of 12 inches apart and 14 inches across. After three and a half hours, 110,000 anthro women gave birth to all the newborns that came out, but as soon as they all came out, they died immediately. They all started crying, and then their vaginas started bleeding profusely. After two hours of non-stop crying and bleeding, all these 110,000 anthro women died. Mary and Bella, right before they all gave birth, and died, ran as far away from the convention as possible for fear that they might actually be traumatized. They heard crying, but not too loudly though. After an hour since the 110,000 anthro women died, they shared a double barrel shotgun. Mary held the gun upwards while Bella gave it fellatio as she pulled the trigger. All the blood that spilled over into another forest in Illinois has fully dried up and coagulated, leaving nothing more than a big, brown fucking bump in the middle of the highway in between the two forests. And finally, seven. Whisper Willet II, alongside with the walking and talking corpse of the original Whisper Willet, after a mad butt fucking, ran all the way up to Des Moines, Iowa to give a speech months before the massive worldwide genocide against all anthro wolves commenced. The plan was to kill off all the anthro wolf daddies, Redbow style. They managed to pull off the genocide that rendered an entire species of anthro animals, let alone animals in general, extinct as of November 1st, 2041. World officials as of 2041 consider the anthro wolf or wolf of all breeds in their eyes as a then to be extinct species. No effort to reproduce and make more wolves ever materialized. Because of Whisper Willet II's entire genocidal stunt, nobody can ever hear a wolf's howl when there's a full moon at night ever again. A worldwide vigil has been held to mourn the death of all the anthro wolves that has ever existed in the name of Whisper Willet, rendering his death in vain. All of this serves to teach you that being the leader of the pack or the idea as a wolf being the leader of the pack is just a fantasy. And I've just recapped all three audiobooks for you. I'm Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out.